Kaushitake Upanishad translated by Max Muller This LibriVox recording is in the public domain For more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by jyoti tarawanat first adhyaya chitra gargayayani forsooth wishing to perform a sacrifice chose aruni udalaka to be his chief priest but aruni sent his son swaitaketu and said perform the sacrifice for him when a swaitaketu had arrived chitra asked him son of gautama is there a hidden place in the world where you are able to place me or is it the other way and are you going to place me in the world to which it that other way leads he answered and said i do not know this but let me ask the master having approached his father he asked thus has chitra asked me how shall i answer aruni said i also do not know this only after having learnt the proper portion of the veda in chitra's own dwelling shall we obtain what others give us knowledge come we will both go having said this he took fuel in his hand like a pupil and approached chitra gargayayani saying may i come near to you he replied you are worthy of brahman o gautama because you were not led away by pride come hither i shall make you know clearly and chitra said all who depart from this world or this body go to the moon in the former the bright half the moon delights in their spirits in the other the dark half the moon sends them on to be born again verily the moon is the door of the swarga world the heavenly world now if a man objects to the moon if one is not satisfied with life there the moon sets him free but if a man does not object then the moon sends him down as rain upon this earth and according to his deeds and according to his knowledge he is born again here as a worm or as an insect or as a fish or as a bird or as a lion or as a boar or as a serpent or as a tiger or as a man or as something else in different places when he has thus returned to the earth some one a sage asks who art thou and he should answer from the wise moon who orders the seasons when it is born consisting of 15 parts from the moon who is the home of our ancestors the seed was brought this seed even me they the gods mentioned in the panjagni vidya gathered up in an active man and through an active man they brought me to a mother then i growing up to be born a being living by months whether 12 or 13 was together with my father who also lived by years of 12 or 13 months that i might either know it the true brahman or not know it therefore o ye seasons grant that i may attain immortality knowledge of brahman by this my true saying by this my toil beginning with the dwelling in the moon and ending with my birth on earth i am like a season and the child of seasons who art thou the sage asks again i am thou he replies then he sets him free to proceed onward he at the time of death having reached the path of the gods 
comes to the world of agni fire to the world of vayu air to the world of varuna to the world of indra to the world of prajapati viraj to the world of brahman hiranyagarbha in that world there is the lake ara the moments called yashtiha the river vijara ageless the tree ilya the city salajya the palace aparajita unconquerable the door keepers indra and prajapati the hall of brahman called vibhu built by vibhu egoism the throne vijakshana buddhi perception the couch amitayujas endless splendor and the beloved manasi mind and her image chakshushi i who as if taking flowers or weaving the worlds and the apsaras the ambas shruti sacred scriptures and the ambayavis buddhi understanding and the rivers ambayas leading to the knowledge of brahman to this world he who knows this who knows the paryanka vidya approaches brahman says to him run towards him servants with such worship as is due to myself he has reached the river vijara ageless he will never age then 500 apsaras go towards him 100 with garlands in their hands 100 with ointments in their hands 100 with perfumes in their hands 100 with garments in their hands 100 with fruit in their hands they adorn him with an adornment worthy of brahman and when thus adorned with the adornment of brahman the knower of brahman moves towards brahman he comes to the lake ara and he crosses it by the mind while those who come to it without knowledge the truth are drowned he comes to the moments called yastiha they flee from him he comes to the river vijara and crosses it by the mind alone and there shakes off his good and evil deeds his beloved relatives obtain the good his unbeloved relatives the evil he has done and as a man driving in a chariot might look at the two wheels without being touched by them thus he will look at day and night thus at good and evil deeds and at all pairs at all correlative things such as light and darkness heat and cold etc being freed from good and freed from evil he the knower of brahman moves towards brahman he approaches the tree ilya and the odor of brahman reaches him he approaches the city salajya and the flavor of brahman reaches him he approaches the palace aparajita and the splendor of brahman reaches him he approaches the door keepers indra and prajapati and they run away from him he approaches the hall vibhu and the glory of brahman reaches him he thinks i am brahman he approaches the throne vijakshani the saman verses brihad and ratantara are the eastern feet of that throne the saman verses sayaitha and navdasha its western feet the saman verses vairupa and vairaja its sides lengthways south and north the saman verses sakavra and raivata its sides crossways east and west that throne is prajna knowledge for by knowledge self knowledge he sees clearly he approaches 
the couch amita yujas that is prana speech the past and the future or its eastern feet prosperity and earth its western feet the saman verses brihad and ratantara are the two sides lengthways of the couch south and north the saman verses bhadra and yajana yajaniya or its cross sides at the head and feet east and west the rik and saman are the long sheets east and west the yajus the cross sheets south and north the moon beam the cushion the udgita the white coverlet prosperity the pillow on this couch sits brahman and he who knows this who knows himself one with brahman sitting on the couch mounts it first with one foot only then brahman says to him who art thou and he shall answer i am like a season and the child of the seasons sprung from the womb of endless space from the light from the luminous brahman the light the origin of the year which is the past which is the present which is all living things and all elements is the self thou art the self what thou art that am i brahman says to him who am i he shall answer that which is the true satyam brahman asks what is the true he says to him what is different from the gods and from the senses prana that is sat but the gods and the senses are tyam therefore by that name satya true is called all this whatever there is all this thou art this is also declared by a verse this great rishi whose belly is the yajus the head the saman the form the rik is to be known as being imperishable as being brahman brahman says to him how dost thou obtain my male names he should answer by breath prana brahman asks how my female names he should answer by speech vak brahman asks how my neuter names he should answer by mind manas how smells by the nose how forms by the eye how sounds by the ear how flavors of food by the tongue how actions by the hands how pleasures and pain by the body how joy delight and offspring by the organ how journeyings by the feet how thoughts and what is to be known and desired by knowledge pratnya alone brahman says to him what a indeed is this my world the whole brahman world and it is thine whatever victory whatever might belong to brahman that victory and that might he obtains who knows this yeah who knows this end of first adhyaya recording by jyoti taravanat second adhyaya of kaushitake upanishad translated by max mura this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti taravanat prana breath is brahman thus says kaushitake of this prana which is brahman the mind manas is the messenger speech 
the housekeeper the eye the guard the ear the informant he who knows mind as the messenger of prana which is brahman becomes possessed of the messenger he who knows speech as the housekeeper becomes possessed of the housekeeper he who knows the eye as the guard becomes possessed of the guard he who knows the ear as the informant becomes possessed of the informant now to that prana which is brahman all these deities mind speech eye ear bring an offering though he asks not for it and thus to him who knows this all creatures bring an offering though he asks not for it for him who knows this there is this upanishad secret vow beg not as a man who has begged through a village and got nothing sits down and says i shall never eat anything given by those people and as then those who formerly refused him press him to accept their arms thus is the rule for him who begs not but the charitable will press him and say let us give to thee prana breath is brahman thus says pangya and in that prana which is brahman the eye stands firm behind speech the ear stands firm behind the eye the mind stands firm behind the ear and the spirit stands firm behind the mind to that prana which is brahman all these deities bring an offering though he asks not for it and thus to him who knows this all all creatures bring an offering though he asks not for it for him who knows this there is this upanishad secret vow beg not as a man who has begged through a village and got nothing sits down and says i shall never eat anything given by those people and as then those who formerly refused him press him to accept their arms thus is the rule for him who begs not but the charitable will press him and say let us give to thee now follows the attainment of the highest treasure prana spirit if a man meditates on that highest treasure let him on a full moon or a new moon or in the bright fortnight under an auspicious nakshatra at one of these proper times bending his right knee offer oblations of ghee with a ladle after having placed the fire swept the ground strewn the sacred grass and sprinkled water let him say the deity called speech is the attainer may it attain this for me from him who possesses and can bestow what i wish for swaha to it the deity called prana breath is the attainer may it attain this for me from him swaha to it the deity called the eye is the attainer may it attain this for me from him swaha to it the deity called the ear is the attainer may it attain this for me from him swaha to it the deity called mind manas is the attainer of it may it attain this for me from him swaha to it the deity called pragna knowledge is the attainer of it may it attain this for me from him swaha to it then having inhaled the smell of the smoke and having rubbed his limbs with the ointment of ghee walking on in silence let him declare his wish or let him send a messenger he will surely obtain his wish now follows the daiva samra the desire to be accomplished by the gods if a man desires to become dear to any man or woman or to any men or women then at one of the four mentioned proper times he offers in exactly the same manner as before oblations of ghee saying i offer thy speech in myself this one here 
swaha i offer thy ear in myself i this one here swaha i offer thy mind in myself this one here swaha i offer thy pragna knowledge in myself i this one here swaha then having inhaled the smell of the smoke and having rubbed his limbs with the ointment of ghee walking on in silence let him try to come in contact or let him stand speaking in the wind so that the wind may carry his words to the person by whom he desires to be loved surely he becomes dear and they think of him now follows the restraint samyamana instituted by pratardana the son of divodasa they call it the inner agnihotra so long as a man speaks he cannot breathe he offers all the while his prana breath in his speech and so long as a man breathes he cannot speak he offers all the while his speech in his breath these two endless and immortal oblations he offers always whether waking or sleeping whatever other oblations there are those for example of the ordinary agnihotra consisting of milk and other things they have an end for they consist of works which like all works have an end the ancients knew this the best agnihotra did not offer the ordinary agnihotra ukta is brahman thus said sukshabringara let him meditate on it the ukta as the same with the rik and all beings will praise him as the best let him meditate on it as the same with the yajus and all beings will join before him as the best let him meditate on it as the same with the saman and all beings will bow before him as the best let him meditate on it as the same with might let him meditate on it as the same with glory let him meditate on it as the same with splendor for as the bow is among weapons the mightiest the most glorious the most splendid thus is he who knows this among all beings the mightiest the most glorious the most splendid the advaryu conceives the fire of the altar which is used for the sacrifice to be himself in it he the advaryu weaves the yajus portion of the sacrifice and in the yajus portion of the hothri weaves the rik portion of the sacrifice and in the rik portion of the udgatri weaves the saman portion of the sacrifice he the advaryu or prana is the self of the threefold knowledge he indeed is the self of it of prana he who knows this is the self of it becomes prana next follows the three kinds of meditation of the all conquering sarvajit kaushitaki the all conquering kaushitaki adores the sun when rising having put on the sacrificial cord having brought water and having thrice sprinkled the water cup saying thou art the deliverer deliver me from sin in the same manner he adores the sun when in the zenith saying thou art the highest deliverer deliver me highly from sin in the same manner he adores the sun when setting saying thou art the full deliverer deliver me fully from sin thus he fully removes whatever sin he committed by day and by night and in the same manner he who knows this likewise adores the sun and fully removes whatever sin he committed by day and by night then secondly let him worship every month in the year at the time of the new moon the moon as it is seen in the west 
in the same manner as before described with regard to the sun or let him send forth his speech toward the moon with two green blades of grass saying o thou who art mistress of immortal joy through that gentle heart of mine which abides in the moon may i never weep for misfortune concerning my children the children of him who thus adores the moon do not indeed die before him thus it is with a man to whom a son is already born now for one to whom no son is born as yet he mutters the three rick verses increase o soma may vigor come to thee may milk may food go to thee that ray which the adithyas gladden having muttered these three rick verses he says do not increase by our breath prana by our offspring by our cattle he who hates us and whom we hate increase by his breath by his offspring by his cattle thus i turn the turn of god i return the turn of aditya after these words having raised the right arm towards soma he lets to go again then thirdly let him worship on the day of the full moon the moon as it is seen in the east in the same manner saying thou art soma the king the wise the five mouthed the lord of creatures the brahmana is one of thy mouths with that mouth thou eatest the kings kshatriyas make me an eater of food by that mouth the king is one of thy mouths with that mouth thou eatest the people vaisyas make me an eater of food by that mouth the hawk is one of thy mouths with that mouth thou eatest the birds make me an eater of food by that mouth fire is one of thy mouths with that mouth thou eatest this world make me an eater of food by that mouth in thee there is the fifth mouth with that mouth thou eatest all beings make me an eater of food by that mouth do not decrease by our life by our offspring by our cattle he who hates us and whom we hate decrease by his life by his offering by his cattle thus i turn the turn of the god i return the turn of aditya after these words having raised the right arm he lets it go again next having addressed these prayers to soma when a being with his wife let him stroke her heart saying o oh, fair one who hast obtained immortal joy by that which has entered thy heart through prajapati mayest thou never fall into sorrow about thy children her children then do not die before her next if a man has been absent and returns home let him smell kiss his son's head saying thou springest from every limb thou art born from the heart thou my son art myself indeed live thou a hundred harvests he gives him his name saying be thou a stone be thou an axe be thou solid gold thou my son art light indeed live thou a hundred harvests he pronounces his name 
then he embraces him saying as prajapati the lord of creatures embraced his creatures for their welfare thus i embrace thee pronouncing his name then he mutters into his right ear saying o thou quick maghavan give to him o indra bestow the best wishes thus he whispers into his left ear let him then thrice smell kiss his head saying do not cut off the line of our race do not suffer live a hundred harvests of life i kiss thy head o son with thy name he then thrice makes a lowing sound over his head saying i low over thee with the lowing sound of cows next follows the daiva parimara the dying around of the gods the absorption of the two classes of gods mentioned before into prana or brahman this brahman shines forth indeed when the fire burns and it dies when it burns not its splendor goes to the sun alone the life prana the moving principle to the air this brahman shines forth indeed when the sun is seen and it dies when it is not seen its splendor goes to the moon alone the life prana to the air this brahman shines forth indeed when the moon is seen and it dies when it is not seen its splendor goes to the lightning alone its life prana to the air this brahman shines forth indeed when the lightning flashes and it dies when it flashes not its splendor goes to the air and the life prana to the air thus all these deities that is fire sun moon lightning having entered the air though dead do not vanish and out of the very air they rise again so much with reference to the deities mythological now then with reference to the body physiological this brahman shines forth indeed when one speaks his speech and it dies when one does not speak his splendor goes to the eye alone the life prana to breath prana this brahman shines forth indeed when one sees with the eye and it dies when one does not see its splendor goes to the ear alone the life prana to breath prana this brahman shines forth indeed when one hears with the ear and it dies when one does not hear its splendor goes to the mind alone the life prana to the breath prana this brahman shines forth indeed when one thinks with the mind and it dies when one does not think its splendor goes to the breath prana alone and the life prana to the breath prana thus all these deities the senses etc having entered breath or life prana alone though dead do not vanish and out of the very breath prana they rise again and if two mountains the southern and northern were to move forward trying to crush him who knows this they would not crush him but those who hate him and those whom he hates they die around him next follows the nishraya sadhana the accepting of the preeminence of prana breath or life by the other gods the deities speech i ear mind contending with each for who was the best 
went out of this body and the body lay without breathing withered like a log of wood then speech went into it but speaking by speech it lay still then the eye went into it but speaking by speech and seeing by the eye it lay still then the ear went into it but speaking by speech seeing by the eye hearing by the ear it lay still then mind went into it but speaking by speech seeing by the eye hearing by the ear thinking by the mind it lay still then breath prana life went into it and thence it rose at once all these deities having recognized the preeminence of prana and having comprehended prana alone as the conscious self prajnatman went out of this body with all these five different kinds of prana and resting in the air knowing that prana had entered the air and merged in the ether akasha they went to heaven and in the same manner he who knows this having recognized the preeminence in prana and having comprehended prana alone as the conscious self prajnatman goes out of this body with all these does no longer believe in this body and resting in the air and merged in the ether he goes to heaven he goes to where those gods speech etc are and having reached this he who knows this becomes immortal with that immortality which those gods enjoy next follows the father's tradition to the son and thus they explain it the father when going to depart calls his son after having strewn the house with fresh grass and having laid the sacrificial fire and having placed near it a pot of water with a jug full of rice himself covered with a new cloth and dressed in white he places himself above his son touching his organs with his own organs or he may deliver the tradition to him while he sits before him then he delivers it to him the father says let me place my speech in thee the son says i take thy speech in me the father says let me place my scent prana in thee the son says i take thy scent in me the father says let me place my eye in thee the son says i take thy eye in me the father says let me place my ear in thee the son says i take thy ear in me the father says let me place my tastes of food in thee the son says i take thy tastes of food in me the father says let me place my actions in thee the son says i take thy actions in me the father says let me place my pleasure and pain in thee the son says i take thy pleasure and pain in me the father says let me place happiness joy and offspring in thee the son says i take thy happiness joy and offspring in me the father says let me place my walking in thee the son says i take thy walking in me the father says let me place my mind in thee the son says i take thy mind in me the father says let me place my knowledge pragna in thee the son says i take thy knowledge in me but if the father is very ill he may say shortly let me place my spirits pranas in thee 
and the sun, I take thy spirits in me. Then the son walks round his father, keeping his right side towards him, and goes away. The father calls after him, May fame, glory of countenance, and honour always follow thee. Then the other looks back over his left shoulder, covering himself with his hand or the hem of his garment, saying, Obtain the heavenly worlds, swarga, and all desires. If the father recovers, let him be under the authority of his son, or let him wander about as an ascetic. But if he departs, then let them dispatch him, as he ought to be dispatched. Yeah, as he ought to be dispatched. End of Second Adhyaya Recording by Jyoti Taravanath Third Adhyaya of Kaushitake Upanishad Translated by Max Muller This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jyoti Taravanath Pratardhana, forsooth, the son of Vivodasa, king of Kasi, came by means of fighting and strength to the beloved abode of Indra. Indra said to him, Pratardhana, let me give you a boon to choose. And Pratardhana answered, Do you yourself choose that boon for me, which you deem most beneficial for a man? Indra said to him, No one who chooses, chooses for another. Choose thyself. Then Pratardhana replied, then that boon to choose is no boon for me. Then, however, Indra did not swerve from the truth, for Indra is truth. Indra said to him, Know me only, that is what I deem most beneficial for man, that he should know me. I slew the three-headed son of Tavastri, I delivered the Arunmukhas, the devotees, to the wolves, Salavrika, breaking many treaties. I kill the people of Prakalada in heaven, the people of Paloma in the sky, the people of Kalakanga on earth, and not one hair of me was harmed there. And he who knows me thus, by no deed of his is his life harmed, not by the murder of his mother, not by the murder of his father, not by theft, not by the killing of a Brahman. If he is going to commit a sin, the bloom does not depart from his face. Indra said, I am Prana. Meditate on me as the conscious self, Pragnatma as life, as immortality. Life is prana. Prana is life. Immortality is prana. Prana is immortality. As long as prana dwells in this body, so long surely there is life. By prana he obtains immortality in the other world. By knowledge, true conception. He who meditates on me as life and immortality gains his full life in this world and obtains in the Swarga world immortality and indestructibility. Pratadana said, Some maintain here that the pranas become one, for otherwise no one could at the same time make known a name by speech. See a form with the eye, hear a sound with the ear, think a thought with the mind. After having become one, the pranas perceive all these together, one by one. 
while speech speaks all pranas speak after it while the eye sees all pranas see after it while the ear hears all pranas hear after it while the mind thinks all pranas think after it while the prana breathes all pranas breathe after it thus it is indeed said indra but nevertheless there is a preeminence among the pranas man lives deprived of speech for we see dumb people man lives deprived of sight for we see blind people man lives deprived of hearing for we see deaf people man lives deprived of mind for we see infants man lives deprived of his arms deprived of his legs for we see it thus but prana alone is the conscious self pragnatma and having laid hold of this body it makes it rise up therefore it is said let man worship it alone as ukta what is prana that is pragna self consciousness what is pragna self consciousness that is prana for together pragna and prana live in the body and together they go out of it of that this is the evidence this is the understanding when a man being thus asleep sees no dream whatever he becomes one with that prana alone then speech goes to him when he is absorbed in prana with all names the eye with all forms the ear with all sounds the mind with all thoughts and when he awakes then as from a burning fire sparks proceed in all directions thus from that self the pranas speech etc proceed each towards its place from the pranas the gods from the gods the worlds of this this is the proof this is the understanding when a man is thus sick going to die falling into weakness and faintness they say his thought has departed he hears not he sees not he speaks not he thinks not then he becomes one with that prana alone then speech goes to him who is absorbed in prana with all names the eye with all forms the ear with all sounds the mind with all thoughts and when he departs from his body he departs together with all these speech gives up to him who is absorbed in prana all names so that by speech he obtains all names the nose gives up to him all odors so that by scent he obtains all odors the eye gives up to him all forms so that by the eye he obtains all forms the ear gives up to him all sounds so that by the ear he obtains all sounds the mind gives up to him all thoughts so that by the mind he obtains all thoughts this is the complete absorption in prana and what is prana is pragna self consciousness what is pragna self consciousness is prana for together do these two live in the body and together do they depart now we shall explain how all things become one in that pragna self consciousness speech is one portion taken out of pragna self conscious knowledge the word is its object placed outside 
the nose is one portion taken out of it the odor is its object placed outside the eye is one portion taken out of it the form is its object placed outside the ear is one portion taken out of it the sound is its object placed outside the tongue is one portion taken out of it the taste of food is its object placed outside the two hands are one portion taken out of it their action is their object placed outside the body is one portion taken out of it its pleasure and pain are its object placed outside the organ is one portion taken out of it happiness joy and offspring or its object placed outside the two feet or one portion taken out of it movements are their object placed outside mind is one portion taken out of it thoughts and desires or its object placed outside having by pragna self conscious knowledge taken possession of speech he obtains by speech all words having by pragna taken possession of the nose he obtains all odors having by pragna taken possession of the eye he obtains all forms having by pragna taken possession of the ear he obtains all sounds having by pragna taken possession of the tongue he obtains all tastes of food having by pragna taken possession of the two hands he obtains all actions having by pragna taken possession of the body he obtains pleasure and pain having by pragna taken possession of the organ he obtains happiness joy and offspring having by pragna taken possession of the two feet he obtains all movements having by pragna taken possession of mind he obtains all thoughts for without pragna self consciousness speech does not make known to the self any word my mind was absent he says i did not perceive that word without pragna the nose does not make known any odor my mind was absent he says i did not perceive that odor without pragna the eye does not make known any form my mind was absent he says i did not perceive that form without pragna the ear does not make known any sound my mind was absent he says i did not perceive that sound without pragna the tongue does not make known any taste my mind was absent he says i did not perceive that taste without pragna the two hands do not make known any act our mind was absent they say we did not perceive any act without pragna the body does not make known pleasure or pain my mind was absent he says i did not perceive that pleasure or pain without pragna the organ does not make known happiness joy or offspring my mind was absent he says i did not perceive that happiness joy or offspring without pragna the two feet do not make known any movement our mind was absent they say we did not perceive that movement without pragna no thought succeeds nothing can be known that is to be known let no man try to find out what speech is let him know the speaker let no man try to find out what odor is let him know him who smells let no man try to find out what form is let him know the seer let no man 
try to find out what sound is let him know the hearer let no man try to find out the tastes of food let him know the knower of tastes let no man try to find out what action is let him know the agent let no man try to find out what pleasure and pain are let him know the knower of pleasure and pain let no man try to find out what happiness joy and offspring are let him know the knower of happiness joy and offspring let no man try to find out what movement is let him know the mover let no man try to find out what mind is let him know the thinker these ten objects what is spoken smelled seen etc have reference to pragna self consciousness the ten subjects speech the senses mind have reference to objects if there were no objects there would be no subjects and if there were no subjects there would be no objects for on either side alone nothing could be achieved but that the self of pragna consciousness and prana life is not many but one for as in a car the circumference of a wheel is placed on the spokes and the spokes on the nave thus are these objects circumference placed on the subjects spokes and the subjects on the prana and that prana breath the living and breathing power indeed is the self of pragna the self conscious self blessed imperishable immortal he does not increase by a good action nor decrease by a bad action for he the self of prana and pragna makes him whom he wishes to lead up from these worlds do a good deed and the same makes him whom he wishes to lead down from these worlds do a bad deed and he is the guardian of the world he is the king of the world he is the lord of the universe and he is my indra's self thus let it be known yeah thus let it be known end of third adhyaya recording by jyoti taravanat fourth adhyaya of kaushita ke upanishad translated by max muller this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti taravanat there was formerly gargaya balaki famous as a man of great reading for it was said of him that he lived among the usinaras among the satvat matsyas the kuru panchalas the kasi videhas having gone to anjatasatru the king of kasi he said to him shall i tell you brahman anjatasatru said to him we give a thousand cows for that speech of yours for verily all people run away saying janaka the king of mithila is our father patron balaki said the person that is in the sun on him i meditate as brahman ajata satru said to him now now do not challenge me to disputation on this i meditate on him who is called great clad in white raiment the supreme the head of all beings 
whoso meditates on him thus becomes supreme and the head of all beings balaki said the person that is in the moon on him i meditate ajatra satru said to him do not challenge me on this i meditate on him as soma the king the self source of all food whoso meditates on him thus becomes the self source of all food balaki said the person that is in the lightning on him i meditate ajatra satru said to him do not challenge me on this i meditate on him as the self in light whoso meditates on him thus becomes the self in light balaki said the person that is in the thunder on him i meditate ajatra satru said to him do not challenge me on this i meditate on him as the self of sound whoso meditates on him thus becomes the self of sound balaki said the person that is in the ether on him i meditate ajatra satru said to him do not challenge me on this i meditate on him as the full quiescent brahman whoso meditates on him thus is filled with offspring and cattle neither he himself nor his offspring dies before the time balaki said the person that is in the air on him i meditate ajatra satru said to him do not challenge me on this i meditate on him as indra why kunta as the unconquerable army whoso meditates on him thus becomes victorious unconquerable conquering his enemies balaki said the person that is in the fire on him i meditate ajatra satru said to him do not challenge me on this i meditate on him as powerful whoso meditates on him thus becomes powerful among others balaki said the person that is in the water on him i meditate ajatra satru said to him do not challenge me on this i meditate on him as the self of the name whoso meditates on him thus becomes the self of the name so far with regard to deities mythological now with regard to the body physiological balaki said the person that is in the mirror on him i meditate ajatra satru said to him do not challenge me on this i meditate on him as the likeness whoso meditates on him thus to him a son is born in his family who is his likeness not one who is not his likeness balaki said the person that is in the echo on him i meditate ajatra satru said to him do not challenge me on this i meditate on him as the second who never goes away whoso meditates on him thus he gets a second from his second his wife he becomes doubled balaki said the sound that follows a man on that i meditate ajatra satru said to him do not challenge me on this i meditate on him as life whoso meditates on him thus neither he himself nor his offspring will faint before the time balaki said the person that is in the shadow on him i meditate ajatra satru said to him do not challenge me on this i meditate on him as death whoso meditates on him thus neither he himself nor his offspring will die before the time balaki said the person that is embodied on him i meditate ajatra satru said to him do not challenge me on this i meditate on him as lord of 
creatures. Whoso meditates on him thus is multiplied in offspring and cattle. Balaki said, The self which is conscious, Pragna, and by whom he who sleeps here walks about in sleep, on him I meditate. Ajatrasatru said to him, Do not challenge me on this. I meditate on him as Yama, the king. Whoso meditates on him thus, everything is subdued for his excellencies. Balaki said, The person that is in the right eye, on him I meditate. Ajatasatru said to him, Do not challenge me on this. I meditate on him as the self of the name, as the self of fire, as the self of splendor. Whoso meditates on him thus, he becomes the self of these. Balaki said, The person that is in the left eye, on him I meditate. Ajatasatru said to him, Do not challenge me on this. I meditate on him as the self of the true, as the self of lightning, as the self of light. Whoso meditates on him thus, he becomes the self of these. After this, Balaki became silent. Ajatasatru said to him, Thus far only do you know, O Balaki? Thus far only, replied Balaki. Then Ajatasatru said to him, Vainly did you challenge me, saying, Shall I tell you, Brahman? O Balaki, he who is the maker of those persons whom you mentioned, he of whom all this is the work, he alone is to be known. Thereupon Balaki came, carrying fuel in his hand, saying, May I come to you as a pupil? Ajatasatru said to him, I deem it improper that a Kshatriya should initiate a Brahmana. Come, I shall make you know clearly. Then, taking him by the hand, he went forth, and the two together came to a person who was asleep. And Ajatasatru called him, saying, Thou great one, clad in white raiment, Soma king, but he remained lying. Then he pushed him with a stick, and he rose at once. Then said Ajatasatru to him, Palaki, where did this person here sleep? Where was he? Whence came he thus back? Palaki did not know. And Ajatasatru said to him, where this person here slept, where he was, whence he thus came back is this. The arteries of the heart, called hitha, extend from the heart of the person towards the surrounding body, small as a hair divided a thousand times. They stand full of a thin fluid of various colors white black yellow red in these the person is when sleeping he sees no dream then he becomes one with that prana alone then speech goes to him with all names the eye with all forms the ear with all sounds the mind with all thoughts and when he awakes then as from a burning fire sparks proceed in all directions thus from that self the pranas speech etc proceed each towards its place from the pranas the gods from the gods the worlds and as a razor might be fitted in a razor case, or as fire in the fireplace. 
the arani on the altar even thus this conscious self enters the self of the body considers the body as himself to the very hairs and nails and the other selves such as speech etc follow that self as his people follow the master of the house and as the master feeds with his people nay as his people feed on the master thus does this conscious self feed with the other selves as a master with his people and the other selves follow him as his people follow the master so long as indra did not understand that self the asuras conquered him when he understood it he conquered the asuras and obtained the preeminence among all gods sovereignty supremacy and thus also he who knows this obtains preeminence among all beings sovereignty supremacy yeah he who knows this end of fourth adhyaya end of kaushitake upanishad recording by jyoti taravnat